The former nurse Lucy Letby has been found guilty of the attempted murder of a premature baby known as Baby K in February 2016. The jury sent out at 11.30 today and returned with a unanimous verdict. Hey everybody, welcome back to Circuit Court Watch. Today we're going to be diving into a harrowing and deeply unsettling case that gripped the United Kingdom. Lucy Letby, a former neonatal nurse born on January 4th, 1990, is now known as the most prolific serial child killer in modern British history. Between June 2015 and June 2016, Letby murdered seven infants and attempted to murder six others at the Countess of Chester Hospital. Suspicion arose due to the alarming number of infant deaths coinciding with her tenure. Despite her pleas of innocence, Leppi was found guilty after a 10-month trial and sentenced to life imprisonment in August of 2023. Further investigations have led to additional convictions and a broader inquiry into her actions and the hospital's response. Today we're going to explore the details and the aftermath of these tragic events. Leppi began her career as a registered nurse at the neonatal unit of the Countess of Chester Hospital in 2012. In a 2013 staff profile, she described her role as caring for a, quote, a wide range of babies requiring various levels of support, end quote, and expressed joy in seeing them progress in supporting their families. She also participated in a fundraising campaign for a new neonatal unit at the hospital. However, Leppi found non-intensive care work boring. She completed two training placements at Liverpool Women's Hospital in late 2012 and early 2015, which were later investigated after her conviction. In 2015, Leppi qualified to work with infants in intensive care, and in April 2016, she was reassigned from night shifts to day shifts by the ward manager. In June 2016, consultants requested that management remove Leppi from clinical duties pending an investigation into her conduct. She was subsequently transferred to the patient experience team in July 2016 and later to the Risk and Patient Safety Office, where she worked until her arrest in 2018. In June 2015, four infants collapsed in the neonatal unit of Countess of Chester Hospital, three of whom tragically passed away. This was highly unusual, however, as the unit typically saw only two or three deaths per year. The infants involved did not respond normally to resuscitation attempts, prompting a consultant and lead neonatologist to conduct an informal review. They report these incidents to the NHS Foundation Trust Committee, responsible for addressing serious incidents, which class the deaths as medication errors. Notably, Stephen Beery, the head of the unit observed that nurse Lucy Letby had been on shift for all of the incidents. However, the, he initially considered this as an unsurprising coincidence, giving Letby's frequent extra shifts to cover staffing shortages. Later, medical consultants informed the police that such unexpected and unexplained collapses were highly unusual, despite studies indicating that about half of unexpected infant collapses remain unexplained after an autopsy. By October 2015, a ward manager conducted her own review, noting that Leppi was the only staff member consistently present during these unexplained collapses and deaths. This information was relayed to the lead neonatologist, who, along with other consultants, voiced concerns to hospital management. Despite these concerns, they were either resisted by the trust executives or flat out ignored. In February 2016, a thematic review conducted by the lead neonatologist and other consultants investigated five unexplained deaths and collapses within the unit, concluding that Letby's presence was the only common factor. This prompted the lead neonatologist to request an urgent meeting with the unit manager, the hospital's medical director, and a director of nursing, which took place in May of 2016. The executive team, however, deemed the spike in deaths coincidental and took no substantial action. On June 24, 2016, after the deaths of two triplet babies, the lead neonatologist demanded Letby's removal from the unit. 
The duty executive, however, insisted that Lippi was safe to work and took personal responsibility for any further actions. By late June, the trust executive directors convened to consider involving the police, but ultimately decided against it, suspecting certain doctors of a misguided witch hunt and fearing potential harm to the trust's reputation. Instead, they arranged a review of the Rural College of Pediatrics and Child Health, initiated in September 2016. The unit's services were scaled back in July 2016, reducing cost spaces and no longer accommodating premature births before the 32-week mark. The RCPCH review, limited in scope by the trust, did not investigate Lepi's actions for the deaths, but focused on the unit's general service. Their October 2016 findings highlighted staffing and senior cover issues, but did not provide a definitive explanation They recommended a detailed case review of each death, but the medical director only facilitated a brief summary review, identifying four cases needing local forensic review. Despite recommendations for thorough external and forensic reviews, the hospital board was misled about the review's scope and findings, with the medical director attributing the deaths to leadership and intervention issues. In September 2016, Letby filed a formal grievance about her transfer from clinical duties to the hospital's Risk and Patients Office of Safety, which was upheld by the board in January 2017. They determined her removal was orchestrated by consultants without hard evidence and supported her return to the neonatal unit. Letby was also offered a placement at Alder Hay Children's Hospital and support for advanced practice or a master's degree. The chief executive apologized to Letby and her parents and assured them that the doctors who made the allegations would be dealt with. The consultants were later instructed to send Letby a letter of apology. In March of 2017, following advice from the regional neonatal lead, consultants again requested police involvement. They met with Cheshire Constabulary on April 27, 2017, raising their concerns just before Letby was due to return to work. The trust publicly announced the public investigation in May 2017, seeking to rule out unnatural causes of death. The investigation, named Operation Hummingbird, lasted a year exploring various hypotheses, including inflicted harm. On July 3, 2018, Lucy Leppi was arrested on suspicion of eight counts of murder and six counts of attempted murder. Following her arrest, the police expanded their investigation to cover her entire career, including her tenure at Liverpool Women's Hospital. Leppi was initially bailed on July 6, 2018, but was rearrested on June 10, 2019, and bailed again three days later. On November 10, 2020, she was arrested once more, and this time denied bail. Throughout the process, Leppi denied all charges, attributing the incidents to hospital hygiene and staffing issues. Leppi's trial commenced at Manchester Crown Court on October 10, 2022, before Mr. Justice Gross. She pleaded not guilty to seven counts of murder and 15 counts of attempted murder. The trial was attended by Leppi's parents and the families of the victims. The child victims were identified as Child A through Child Q, and the press was prohibited from revealing the identities of the 17 babies and nine colleagues who testified a level of secrecy really seen outside of national security cases. Two years prior, Mrs. Justice Stein had banned the identification of the surviving victims until their 18th birthdays. Several witnesses, including a doctor Leppi was infatuated with, requested anonymity. The judge granted these requests, emphasizing the importance of obtaining testimony over public identification. In a chilling testimony, the mother of one victim described hearing her infant scream and discovering blood around the baby's mouth with Lucy Letby in the room. Letby attributed the blood to a nasogastric tube, saying, trust me, I'm a nurse. Tragically, the baby's condition deteriorated and the infant died a few hours later. Letby later sent a sympathy card to the parents on the day of the baby's funeral, a card she had photographed and kept pictures of on her phone. During the trial, it was revealed that Leppi had to be told multiple times not to enter the room where the grieving parents were. 
texts sent by Lippi to friends were presented by the Crown Prosecution Service as evidence of her intrusive curiosity and inappropriate behavior. Shortly after the collapse of Child M, Lepi texted about winning money on the Grand National and plans for a party. She had also searched for the parents of several infant victims on Facebook, even on the anniversary of a baby's death, doing so for a total of 11 affected families. The prosecution argued that suspicious incidents began in 2015 when Lepi qualified to work with infants in intensive care. A consultant testified to finding Lepi standing over a desaturating infant and failing to intervene, with the infant only surviving the collapse. All the babies involved had been expected to live, making their deaths particularly shocking. Between March and June 2016, three more babies nearly died under Lepi's care. In June, while caring for healthy triplets, two of them died on consecutive days, causing considerable distress among staff except for Lepi. Similar incidents with twins collapsing within 24 hours had occurred in August of 2015. During the police investigation, it was found that a baby had been intentionally poisoned with insulin, evidence missed for two years. This was identified through laboratory analysis, which showed that child L had also been poisoned with insulin. Child L's twin brother, child M, collapsed while under Letby's care but survived after extensive resuscitation, with suspicions that Lepi had injected air into his bloodstream. Although not supposed to work night shifts, Lepi had volunteered for an extra shift to care for child L. At trial, Lepi accepted that some victims had been deliberately injected with insulin, acknowledging that someone must have administered it. Expert witnesses described the insulin evidence as the smoking gun. A pediatrician testified that clinicians had raised concerns about Lepi but were dismissed by hospital administration. Another doctor testified that Lepi commented, He's not leaving here alive, is he? An hour before one victim died. Despite consultants' request to remove Lepi from duties, hospital staff refused, and another baby nearly died under her care the next day. Lepi was the only staff member on duty for all 25 suspicious incidents. After her removal and the unit's downgrade to lower-risk babies, no further suspicious incidents occurred. It was discovered that Lepi had falsified patient records to cover her tracks, altering times to avoid being placed at the scene. Criminal psychologist Dr. David Holmes noted that Lepi's various methods of attacking her victims, such as insulin and air injections and overfeeding milk, were chosen because they would dissipate and be difficult to detect. During searches of Lucy Lepi's and her parents' homes, as well as Lepi's handbag, police discovered numerous handwritten post-it notes. These notes contained fragmentary and troubling phrases such as help. I'm sorry that you couldn't have a chance at life. I don't want to do this anymore. Not good enough. And even why me? I haven't done anything wrong. We tried our best and it wasn't enough. I am evil. I did this. And lastly, I killed them on purpose because I'm not good enough to care for them. The defense argued that these notes were merely the anguished outpouring of a young woman in fear and despair, written amidst employment issues, including a grievance procedure with the NHS Trust. They contended that Lippi was expressing her distress and frustration over being removed from the neonatal unit. Lippi herself denied that the notes were a confession, claiming they reflected her mental turmoil during the investigation. However, the prosecution interpreted the notes as an expression of Lepi's frustration at being taken off the neonatal unit and potentially as a form of confession. The Guardian reported that the notes were the closest the prosecution had to a direct confession. The Telegraph highlighted a particular note reading, I'll never marry or have children. I'll never know what it's like to have a family, suggesting that Lepi's fear of not having her own children might have driven her actions. In addition to the notes, Lepi's diary was found to have the initials of the deceased babies marked on the exact days they died, further implicating her in the deaths. In May 2023, Lucy Lepi gave evidence in court, breaking down in tears as she claimed that she had been made to feel incompetent but had meant no harm. Lepi testified that the allegations had severely impacted her mental health, stating, I don't think you can be accused of anything worse than that. I just changed as a person. My mental health deteriorated. I felt isolated from my friends on the unit. During her testimony, it was observed that she frequently contradicted herself, 
muddled her story and grew increasingly frustrated with the prosecution's questions, a stark contrast to her usually calm demeanor. Lippi's defense lawyer argued that she was a dedicated nurse in a system which has failed and that the prosecution's case was driven by the assumption that someone was doing deliberate harm, coinciding with Miss Lepi's presence at certain times. The defense contended that the real issue was a massive failure of care in a busy hospital neonatal unit, far too great to blame on one person. They also suggested that the extraordinary bleeding in a baby boy whom Lepi was accused of murdering could have been caused by a rigid wire or tube. Additionally, Lepi's colleagues denied the therapeutic use of insulin in these cases. The jury returned final verdicts on August 18, 2023, finding Lucy Lepi guilty of the murder of seven babies. She killed them by injecting air, overfeeding, poisoning with insulin, and assaulting them with medical tools, making her the most prolific serial killer of children in modern British history. Lepi was also found guilty of seven counts of attempted murder of six infants and not guilty on two counts of attempted murder. The jury was unable to reach verdicts on six further attempted murder charges. Nicholas Johnson KC requested 28 days to consider whether a retrial would be sought for these six accounts. On August 21, 2023, Lepi was sentenced to life imprisonment with a whole life order, the most severe sentence under English law. A whole life order means life without parole. She is the fourth woman in UK legal history to receive such a sentence. Justice Goss described Lepi's actions as a cruel, calculated, and cynical campaign of child murder involving the smallest and most vulnerable of children, stating that her actions demonstrated a deep malevolence bordering on sadism, and noting her lack of remorse in any mitigating factors. Lepi opted not to attend the sentencing hearing, thus missing the victim impact statements and the passing of her sentence. In response, Alex Chalk, Secretary of State for Justice, announced that the government would explore options to change the law to compel defendants to attend their sentencing. On August 30, 2023, Prime Minister Rishi Sunak announced that the UK government would introduce legislation to Parliament to enforce attendance at sentence hearings by forcing, if necessary, or face additional prison time. Following the trial, Lepi was transformed to HMP Lau Newton, a closed prison for women in County Durham. As of January 2024, she's being held in HM Prison, Bronzefield. In closing, the prosecution in Lucy Lepi's case suggested boredom, thrill-seeking, and a desire to play God as possible motives for her killings. They also alleged that Lepi had a secret relationship with a married doctor involved in some of the cases. Evidence included frequent texts to him during certain night shifts and a piece of paper from Lippy's office with phrases like, I trusted you with everything and loved you. You were my best friend and please help me. Lippy denied these allegations, including having any relationship or crush on the doctor in question. A former detective who led the investigation into the 1990s Beverly Ollett case drew parallels between Ollett's and Lippy's cases suggesting that Lepi might have copied Ellett's methods. Criminal psychologists Dominic Wilmot and David Holmes proposed that Lepi could have been motivated by factitious disorder imposed on another, a theory also proposed about Ellett. David Wilson, an emeritus professor of criminology, argued in an August 2023 opinion piece in The Guardian that Lepi was driven by a hero complex. Later on Newsnight, Wilson suggested that healthcare killers often join the profession to target vulnerable victims, such as the very old or very young. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, make sure to leave any comments down below on the case. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. And we thank you for watching Circuit Court Watch. This is Tom. Have a good day.